Hi everyone, I am Matteo Collina. I am here today to talk about what version of Node.js you should actually use. We'll also talk a little bit about semantic versioning and long-term support. What are those terms? So let's get into it very quickly. First of all, this talk is about Node.js. And if you're not using Node.js, you should, really. Um, so, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Node.js follow a very specific release uh, pattern called uh, semantic versioning. Semantic versioning, or SEMVER, you can find it at semver.org, it's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a it's a communication protocol between developers. Essentially, we can say that you can have a minor, a major, minor, or patch number, and those are divided by dots. Hey, so you can have a major version number and that indicates incompatible API changes. So we ban the major when we change some API or we change some behavior of some API. We bump minor when uh, we add functionality in a backward compatible manner. Of course, we can also introduce bugs while doing so. So we bump a patch version when we just fix, when we just do bug fixes. Hopefully it's simple, right? So, uh, however, Node.js on top of, of on top of that talks about long-term support. What is long-term support? So, Node.js adopt a strategy where all the new changes goes into master, which is literally a branch. It's a branch on our GitHub repo. Node.js github.com slash Node.js slash node. And the master branch of that is unstable. Unstable as uh, as commits landing all the time, and those can be somber major, can be minor, can be patch. Yes. Um, then you, we have several active several lines of uh, Node.js, several version lines that are uh, where we can do releases at any given time before we retire them. So, for example. Uh, for example, right now in uh, March, March 2020, we have that the current release is Node 13. Node 13 will keep releasing Node 13, and you can see it here. We, we keep Node 13 going till April. After which, this line is not current anymore. There is just about a month or so left to for node 13 to live. After which, a line can enter maintenance. How it's ma what's maintenance? Well, in maintenance, we just do security releases and security updates. And well, much needed uh, patches and bug fixes that are actually critical to be backported. In fact, we do have two uh, other st another state, which is LTS active. Active LTS means that features are backported to LTS every now and then. Typically, once a quarter, we do a minor release on an LTS branch to do to, to ship new releases. So, just to recap, we have unstable, which is the GitHub, the GitHub.com/slash Node.js as Node March branch, and this build nightly. We do uh, uh, our current release which is uh, uh, built every release every two, three weeks from commit the Nancy master. Uh, but it's also, it's a separate branch. So right now it's v.13.x. And then we do have LTS active, which have concludes commit that have been released uh, on a current release for more than two weeks. So essentially we ship something on 13, for example, and then we move it to LTS active. So 12x or 12.x or 10.x in um, in node um, after two weeks, uh, and then we do have uh, the LTS maintenance and only security fixes and critical bug fix are backported there. And if you look back in our schedule, you can see that uh, node 10 is due to enter maintenance on April 2020, which is close. And everybody should actually be using or moving to node 12, which has a very long time span. So, yay! 
We're also going to ship Note 14 soon, so mm, keep that in mind. So one of the key questions that I get asked all the time is which Node.js version should I use? And people ask me all the time, so this is actually very important. So there's two big things that we need to talk about. If I am building an application or if I'm building a module to publish on NPM, for example. So if I'm building an application, you should target the latest LTS branch. Currently it's 12X. In the future, it might be 14 when it becomes LTS. Next October, Node 13 will become NTS, and then you should start looking into migrate to it. This is for new app. So when you start a new Node.js app, always target the latest LTS release. Uh, however, for existing apps that are running on node 10.x, you have until April 2021 to migrate to another node release. You have to because of security updates. So if you don't, if you are using an unsupported release line, what it will happen is that you will be on your own if there is a security vulnerability. Um, if I'm building a module instead, you want to target all the latest LTS releases, currently 12 and 10, as well as current 13x. Remember to bump the major version when support a Node.js version, it's Ember major. So I, I just wanted to stress this concept a little bit because this is something that really upset me. Um, it's when people and maintainers do not uh, release drop version, drop uh, support for an old version of Node.js in, uh, in a LTS, in a known, um, uh, in a Semver minor. This has, this has happened all the time. Uh, one of the most popular one was the request module and another one it has been Gatsby. And uh, well, you can think why this is a problem. Well, imagine that you have built and you put a lot of sweat in, in building and using those libraries inside an application or whatever that it needs for some reason it has you have a pipeline built using for example node 8 which is deprecated and unsupported now you should migrate right but you don't really want that pipeline to stop working overnight because somebody decided to uh, bump this so and this can be especially painful if your module is a deep dependency chain like a, a, the request module works, was. So um, yeah, please, when you're thinking about this, when you're building a module, please remember to bump the major version only when you so to drop all, all Node.js version when you bump the major. Please, please, thank you. Otherwise, you're going to break a lot of people like me. Mm, sorry. So let's go back to the talk. Um, a big role it's in, oh, sorry, you can actually see all the screens, so hey, a very, very big role in, in, in Node.js, uh, in, in the LTS schedule uh, is done by the Node.js security. And uh, this is actually very important because it's our vulnerability for core, for Node.js core are reported and managed. All node core vulnerabilities go to should be reported via HTTPS uh, on acreone.com slash node.js and um, note that we can issue breaking changes for security purposes. So keep in mind, I broke a lot of people for this really. You know, I've been some very bad security releases long time ago where I broke kind of everybody uh, because of I introduced some header limitations. So I'm sorry. So um, going back to this, uh, it's uh, um, one of the key part of uh, of a safe um, one of one of the key parts of a safe um, uh, deployment pipeline on Node.js is uh, making sure that we can automate the update the version update of uh, of node.js itself and so we don't have to manually redeploy or manually check so what you can do is have a release watcher as part of your infrastructure that monitors for new node.js version and updates and after after you do that we can have um, you can trigger ci when there is a new one 
and then if that pass just do a deploy so everything can be automated for you so you don't really have to do much work right so automation is great um quick quick addition to all of this it's um this is a list of the node.js tsc people the node.js tsc node.js tsc stands for technical steering committee the technical steering committee has final authority on technical direction governance contribution policy and so on and so forth it's a huge list of people thank you all of you i am part of the node.js tsc so thank me as well um these are the people that are responsible for node.js that's great um why you need to win it there but it's a big shout out to all people that you know i work with every week so hey um i just want to remind you that node.js is part of the openjs foundation so you know it might be a good chance to can contribute to it as well you should just know go to node node to do.org so I think that's uh, that's all, more or less. I just wanted to um, I just want to thank you for for your time. Uh, please uh, reach out if you have any questions. Um, these are my contacts at Matteo Collina. I'm at Matteo Collina on Twitter. Please follow me. This has been you know a fantastic tiny slots, and I hope you you enjoyed it. And uh, uh, I would just want to say thank you very much.